Well, YouTube world, I've got a new camera and it's recorded all the way through, but it won't record this for some reason. So I'm going to have to talk over the top, I'm afraid. So hello YouTube world, welcome back to my workshop. My more regular viewers will have realised I haven't put a video out for over six months now. The reason behind that was I was nursing my wife through the last stages of her cancer. She'd been fighting it for the last eight years. We knew there was never going to be any cure for it. She had a rare form of bone cancer and there was only ever going to be one outcome. Sadly, she passed away in November. We've been married for 46 years. She left two lovely children and six beautiful grandchildren. And we all miss her desperately every day. So one of the things she did say to me before she passed away well, she asked me to make a funeral urn for her. So, stick with me, see what I do. And I think she would have been pleased with it. So I've got that set up now. I've got my 90mm chuck on this end. I've got it between centres. And I'm just going to rough it down into a cylindrical shape. And you see by there is a bit of a swelling up on there so that would need to come down first and it is slightly oval but what I'll do is take away all this outer bark and down through the cambrian layer underneath that on cherry is really soft so I just need to take all that away so I'll just get my rough and chisel do first is come in there with my part and off chisel and that give me my datum and come in around there that'll be the waist of the vase so I'm just rough this away So I don't need anything like that diameter on there, so I'll take that away. That's it, bye -bye. Well, Normally what you do with an urn like this, you would have a wider top and slope that in so it just slopes down and disappears down there. What I want to do with this one is just do it the other way because I've got a few cranks up here and I'm hoping if I slope that back that way I should lose most of those. So what I've done now is I've just put my rest over at the angle. That's the angle that I want to achieve. I don't know quite as much as that. So that when I cut my finger holding the chisel can just follow straight along there and I'll replicate that cut. I suppose the look I'm going for really is quite a sort of elegant champagne flute. Quickly sign up then, I'll get back to you. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on here and I'm going to leave a small upstand for the lid to sit over the top. Just straighten that up first and now go for the small upstand. I'm just going to put a small taper on there so that when I make a lid fit on there, it'll just fit down nice and tight. That's good. And now what I'm going to do is go to hollowing. I'm just going to start my Holland tool. So I've done that 
done, I've set up my hope hollowing tool and what you're looking at here is a, I think that's a seven inch monitor. And if you see in the middle of the screen, there's a black dot, you see that black dot there? And what I do is I position that black dot right over the tip of my cutting tool. There's my cutting tool there and there's the black dot right over the top of it. The camera is positioned right over the top of my tool so wherever my tool goes the camera goes with it and when I slide that inside of my hollow piece you can see that block black dot there is still following my cutting tool so when I bring my cutting tool to the edge of that piece of wood I can see exactly from there to that side of wood exactly how much wood I've yet to take off. Let's just start hollowing that. If you see there at the moment, what I'm trying to do is just cut there, which is just underneath the shoulder, and then you can see the tool move. There you go. This is a view of my hollow tool and just cut it inside there. The great thing about this hollow tool is it's articulated just there, and there's another one just there. So that allows this arm to move in any direction I want it to. So you've got articulated point there, articulated point there, and then there's another one there. So you can move, as I say, any direction you want. Okay, so I'm going to be some time doing this. There's not really anything for you to watch. It's right up there as a spectator sport. I'll get back to you once I've finished it. Now my wife loved Christmas with her grandchildren and the rest of her family around her. Once Christmas was out of the way, she looked forward to the spring. She loved looking forward to the first snowdrops, first primroses, daffodils, pussy willow, and when the blackthorn came out in flower, which we call May. So what I'm going to do is decorate this urn with the May flower. As you can see here, what I'm using is my Pography tool or pen, Pography pen, and all I'm doing here is literally is just drawing a series of straight lines, and that's all it is. I do not have an artistic bone in my body, so anybody can do this. And literally, all I'm aiming for is to end up with something that looks like a twig or a branch and the great thing about this is if you've got something tall narrow like this you can make your twig tall and narrow to fill it or you can just make it if you were doing it on the side of a bowl or inside of a bowl um, which I never actually thought of doing before look quite nice in the, on the inside of a bowl um, you can just make it very short and broad. So you see now just burning the lines in and just coming out to the thin twigs at the top. making it look as I say like a branch or a twig so the paint I'm going to use it's an acrylic uh, it's titanium white and then all I do is just go around
what I have done is sped this up six times its normal speed just to get through it but you can see what it is I'm doing, trying to achieve just gives the impression that may blossom on the blackthorn I'll just take that up in the house just let that dry off overnight and we come back tomorrow and finish it all off as you can see this is another piece of cherry and I'm going to use this for the lid I've already cut a tenon on the end of it and put it in my medium jaws and I'm just going through with my roughing gauge now and I'm just going to rip it all down to size so what I've done now is I've set my external calipers to just slightly larger than my iron and I'm just going in with this cardboard tip tool and I'm going to take that down to the size the external size of the iron and then I know that I could just rip that away and as soon as I get down to that uh, collar that I cut on there I know that I'm somewhere near where I want to be I don't get much below that what I've done now is I've taken quite a lot of the length off of that piece of cherry. I didn't need it anywhere near as long as that. And what I'm doing at the moment is just cutting a recess in there so that this will drop straight over the top of my urn. You can see we're almost there. And with the power of YouTube, I'm going to make that a perfect fit next time. And there we have it, a perfect fit. One little tip I'll give to other wood turners. Um, I have found that um, sometimes when you do it, you take a little bit out, a little bit out, a little bit out, then all of a sudden you realise you've taken too much out and it's a really sloppy fit. But what I found you can do, if you pour um, super glue all the way around the inside of your lid and then put some super glue all the way around the outside the corresponding piece of wood that's going in just take it apart let it dry and you'll find that you can build up the layers of super glue and you can end up with a really nice tight fit rather than chucking the piece of wood away and starting again what i should also have said was when you put the super glue on the two halves just put the two bits together give them a twist so the glue is evenly carried all the way around on both pieces and then take them apart and just leave them let the glue dry naturally so what I've done now is I've got the lid which is as you're looking at it is obviously on the right hand side still in the chunk and what I've done is I've taken the iron and I brought my revolving center up and I've jammed that in there nice and tight now what I've done is I brought my chisel up and just let the bevel rub on the iron and then just very gradually brought the tool forward and there you end up with a perfect size for the lid that's a lovely fit lovely fit between the lid and the urn and now I can just take the main body of that way and I can just turn the shape down that I want for the lid what I'm doing next is I'm just going to cut a 50mm recess inside of there for my 50mm jewels so that I can put them inside of there in expansion mode so that I can turn that lid around and then just I can turn the top. So just very quickly turn 50mm recess in there. Obviously if that lid was a little bit smaller I could have used my pin jewels um, and just made something even smaller than that if I needed to. Nave two shaping the top of the lid and all I really want is just a just a dome on there really I'm not looking for anything too fancy too decorative um, I did find that cherry when it dries out it's very hard wood I spent an awful lot of time sharpening my chisels with this and you can really feel feel the difference when you, when the edge goes off your tool So 
very getting very close to shape I want here. Um, what I will do when I pretty much there, I will leave a flat at the very top of that dome because um, I'm going to put a uh, finial in there later on, and I don't want the finial to be stuck up or have a gap under there. I want a nice tight fit. So I've sanded that all down now uh, to 320, I think it was. And now I'm just applying the sand and sealer. And you see what beautiful grain that is on that. A little bit of sand and sealer, a little bit of wax. I'm uh, using micro crystalline wax on this one. And you see what a fantastic shine that is, comes up on there straight away. Beautiful wood to work with, really is nice. Lovely grain. So this is going to be my finial. Uh, it was just another one of the branches off the cherry tree that my neighbour so nicely gave me. And I've still got way too much diameter on that wood, so I'm just very quickly ripping that away. Getting down, as all finials do, they end in a point. So that I'm tapering that down at the moment. What you do need to make sure is you've got very sharp tools when you do this because it is quite thin, it's very delicate and if you've got blunt tool you end up pushing the tool a lot harder than what you need to and you could very easily end up just uh, snapping the finial off so it's important to have very sharp tools when doing this. So what I want to do, that's the end of it done and what I held up just then was the forced a bit that I drilled into the lid. So I'm just going through now. I've set my calipers to the same size as that piece of forstner. So that will go into the lid. And that is the size of the flat that I'm aiming for. So I'll just hold the calipers there until they sli slide straight across so I don't want to be any smaller than that at the back and what I've aimed for there is I've tried to make that big piece of the finial there to replicate the shape of the actual urn. Whether it does or not, that's up to you to decide. But I was quite pleased with that. I was actually going to um, spray that um, with black ebonizing spray to give it a nice contrast that on top, but the it actually um, the grain in there it really is quite pretty there was some nice grain running through there so I left it as it was natural wood I think that was the right choice to make so that's some sand and sealer and I just put some wax on there in a moment and then just polish it all up So there we have the finished article, one funeral urn decorated with May Blossom. I think my wife would have liked that. She was my biggest critic and she would have been the first one to let me know if she didn't like it. But I was quite pleased with that. So thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all again next week. You take care of yourself. Bye bye.